Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem function composition day seven of the JavaScript challenge. We're given an array of functions and we want to return a new function that's already defined for us over here on the right, but we just need to add the implementation of this function. Now in this series, we've already learned a lot about functional programming and today we're going to continue. So here we're given a list of functions in our outer function and we actually want to take this list of functions and apply them consecutively in this kind of manner. So this kind of looks very mathematical. Basically, these are the three functions and we're also given some value X. I don't even know if it's an integer or something else. Well, I guess based on this example, it's an integer, but the way JavaScript works is there's no static typing. So who knows, like this could be some crazy stuff getting passed into us, but we're not really responsible for that. We are responsible for taking these functions and applying them in reverse order on that single value x that's going to be passed in to the inner function. First of all, this seems pretty abstract. So let's actually take a look at the example for us here on the bottom right. I'm going to uncomment it to make it a bit more clear. Suppose we have two functions. One function takes a value and adds one to it. And the second function doubles that value. Let's say we wanted to, for some reason, apply these operations in reverse order. Well, what we could do is take this function, call it fn1 and define it just like this. It's a lambda function, an inline function, and it has this name now. We could also take this second function over here, give it a name of fn fn2. And then for some value like four, if we wanted to apply these two operations, what we could do is something like this console.log first call fn2 on our value four. And then on that value, let's call fn1. So what this will do is double four. So it'll be eight plus one. It should be nine. And this is sort of the imperative way. We're explicitly doing everything ourselves. And this is probably the way you first learned programming. It's kind of the straightforward way for most of us, including me. But there is a lot of power in being able to take code like this and rewrite it like this, where we kind of abstract a lot of the implementation details for us. That's what compose here is doing function composition. And that's kind of our responsibility here to implement that. So first, I'm going to show you how to code that up the imperative way, similar to what we're doing right over here. And then I'm going to show you the declarative solution, which believe it or not, I actually didn't know before I solved this problem today. So you learn something new every day. I'll go ahead and leave this for now, but I'll comment it before we run the code. So what we want to do is go through this list of functions in reverse order. The easiest way to do that, of course, is with a for loop in JavaScript. We have the keyword of so we can say for every function of our list of functions up above, we want to apply them to the value X and then accumulate them in reverse order. So one thing we could do is create another variable up above, but since we already have the variable X, we can just reuse that. So I'm gonna take this function and apply it to the X value like this. And what am I gonna do with the return value? Well, I'm gonna assign that equal to X. So now what this is doing is accumulating the result in our x variable. So after we're done with that, we can just return it. And let me comment this and run the code to prove to you that this works. And whoops, it looks like it doesn't because I was a little bit dumb and forgot to go through these in reverse order. I guess sometimes it's not the language that trips you up. It's just kind of your own logic. So let's make sure to remember to reverse this. And now you can see that we did get the accepted solution. But there is another way to code this up. Notice how we are kind of specifying exactly how this is going to work. We're going to first create a copy of the functions array in reverse order, then iterate through it, then accumulate the result in X and then return the value. Now there's a simpler way to code this up, at least once you get good at functional programming. Right now it might not be so simple for you, but let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to create another function x. I'm just going to comment the above out once we're actually going to run this, but for now I'll leave it as is. But there is a another functional programming operator that belongs to arrays like functions in our case. Let me actually take this up above so that it's actually highlighted. Remember, we learned that functions has the keyword reduce. 
it's pretty powerful. We can specify how we want to aggregate a list of values, but this is kind of an interesting case. Like functions isn't a list of values, it's a list of functions, but that's okay because when we reduce, we actually have the choice of how we want to reduce, how we want to aggregate. When we pass in our function, we can tell it exactly how we want to aggregate it. Yes, we're going to reduce this list of functions, but that doesn't mean we have to sum them up. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. But one thing that we can't do like this is iterate through the functions in reverse order. For that though, we do have something called reduce write, which I've personally never had to use before, but that's okay. Being a programmer is all about applying your knowledge to new problems. So now we know that reduce usually takes two values. It takes a function, which I'm gonna call fn, and I'm gonna define in a second, and it also takes a value, which we want to call our initial value and the value that we want to store our result inside of. Well, I guess how we store it doesn't really matter. That's kind of abstracted for us, but this is our starting value and this is the function that's gonna be applied. Now, this function always kind of has a similar header. So it takes two parameters and then it returns some value. The parameters it takes the first one is usually some accumulator, some variable that we decide to pass in. The first value that this is going to be is going to be the initial value that we pass in. So basically, this initially is going to be the X value that we end up passing in that's gonna be basically passed into us. The second value is always going to be whatever array we're actually reducing. So in our case, instead of calling this N, like if we were reducing an array of numbers, I'd probably call this N, but we're reducing an array of functions. So I'm gonna call this F actually to be a bit more descriptive. Now in the previous problem, when we were trying to take the summation, we just took these two parameters and I'm pretty sure we just added them together and returned that result. Or maybe if we were trying to find the maximum of an array, we would just return the maximum of our two parameters. But we have a bit more flexibility. We know we're reducing an array of functions. So we know that this is not a value, this is a function. So we know we can call it just like this. We can call that function on the initial value that was passed in. So this is probably either really trivial if you're familiar with functional programming or pretty complicated if you're not. And that's perfectly fine. So now that we have this function defined, I'm going to move it up above so that we can actually pass it in down here. Because this function was not declared with the function keyword, we do have to move it up above before we actually call it. Remember what hoisting is all about. And of course, this function is simple enough that we could have actually just passed it in in line. I just kind of wanted to show you in a more simple way. So now let me run this to prove to you that it works. Okay, and once again, I made a pretty sloppy mistake and that is that I forgot to return from inside of here. When once we actually reduce this, we do want to return the return value just like we did down here. So let me do that and run it again. Sorry about the mistake. And now you can see that that does work. So we're definitely learning a lot more about functional programming. I thought these challenges were gonna be a bit more about actual front end programming, but that's perfectly okay. These are some good concepts to learn either way. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.